Hey everyone. A while back I visited Nick Milo at the Lighthouse, the Linking Your Thinking collection of conversations, um, and I tried to demo an Obsidian home screening for iOS using shortcuts, but there had been a bug at the time. Shortcuts, if you launched some shortcuts from the home screen, they would crash and then shortcuts just wouldn't work at all. Um, and I was running the iOS 15 beta at the time, so a couple months ago. Um, and suffice it to say, it wasn't a very impressive demo, it was mostly just a mess. But I still think the ideas that I had for the home screen are somewhat interesting and useful. Um, and so I thought I'd revisit that idea, I'd come back and give a recorded talk, so there's uh, less chance of a big screw up causing the, the demo to be unimpressive. And the idea of this talk is just to give you some concept of what you can do with plain text files through Obsidian um, and shortcuts on the iOS home screen. Um, and you know, if some of these ideas are interesting to you, I'll post links to the shortcuts so you can see how they work and then uh, run with them yourself. Um, but very quickly, I'm just going to walk through what these different features of the home screen uh, that I've created are. And um, if you don't, I'll just be very brief, if you therefore uh, don't care about them at all, um, then you can end the video there. Um, but if you want more information, then I'm going to spend some more time going through them in detail uh, later in the video. But first, just a, a very brief overview. This is the home screen uh, that I'm talking about. And the top uh, widget there is simply a widget pack widget. I use widget twice on this home screen. It is very basic. This is purely aesthetic. I just like the look of the graph um, from Obsidian. So I copied it, copied the screenshot of the graph and from the Obsidian uh, command. So if you right click on a graph in Obsidian, uh, or if you right click on the the menu for a graph in Obsidian, you can simply copy the screenshot. So I copied it, saved it to the file system, and then created a widget that just shows that picture. It's not even live generated, it's just from like a few months ago. The picture doesn't change that much when you regenerate it, so I'm just leaving it there. Um, but it's purely, purely illustrative. illustrative. Then again, I said I would be brief, sorry. So the top is simply a picture of the graph. Um, on the left there is a widget. That widget updates every time I open Obsidian um, and once per day in the very early hours of the, the day. And it takes the to-do items from my daily note and then generates a widget like the one you see there that shows the things that I have to do today. Um, so I find it pretty neat. Um, this Then I'll walk through the buttons. The rest of them aren't widgets. They're just, they're just buttons on the home screen. Um, anytime you've got a shortcut that you want to run from the home screen, there's a couple different ways, but you can go into the shortcuts menu and click add to home screen and then assign an icon and um, tap it in order to run the home screen from right there. And so I'll walk through these very quickly. The daily notes button that you see there simply opens the uh, a little menu that lets me open yesterday, today, or tomorrow's daily note, or to pick a date. The frame button is a note, or is a, a simply a shortcut to a very specific note that I use to navigate uh, through some important parts of my my notes. The projects button will open up a list of current projects that I'm currently engaged in, generated by the projects Kanban that I keep. The current project will actually just take the top item on that list and open it right away. The books icon down below them will open a list of the current books that I'm reading or hoping to read. And uh, it'll uh, if you tap any of those, it'll open. And in this case, I'm using links to, I save them in DevonThink, so I, it'll open the link straight to that book. Um, and then the current book, again, does the same thing as current project. It'll take the top item on that list and just open the, the book right away. And then the final two buttons here are timber and log, which are a play on words. I have created a plugin called Lumberjack, and the idea of this plugin is to emulate some of the just start writing features of drafts, if you are familiar with the app. So the idea is that once I tap timber, it'll open up a blank draft. I can just start writing right away. It always opens in edit mode, so it's very quick. And then the log button does something similar, only it opens straight into a task item on my daily note, um, so I can write down a task that I was hoping to do later today that I just thought of or something like that. It's also very quick. Uh, so that's the home screen. Again, if you're no longer interested or if uh, anything in here, if nothing in here um, suits you, then you know you might want to end now. But if something did pique your interest, I'm going to go through it in more detail and demo each of these in um, uh, the same order that I just talked through them. So let's do it. Uh, this first, first I'll jump to the daily note task uh, widget here. The top widget just opens Obsidian wherever it was. It's just literally linked to the app, so I'm not going to tap that. 
Um, but the widget pack widget, so widget pack is this complicated app, but very powerful that lets you generate your own widgets in a variety of different ways from data that you give it. Um, and in this case, I'm emulating, I started to work on this as a concept. And then I realized that Scotty Jackson, another internet person has come up with it, uh, the same approach. And he has a great, very thorough, um, blog post on how to generate these task based widgets using OmniFocus. So I'll link his blog post in the notes. Um, but I have adapted Scotty Jackson's shortcut in order to take information from Obsidian in order to generate this widget. And then when I tap it, it'll simply open today's daily note. So I'm not going to do that just because it's kind of boring. And I'll show how the daily notes button here instead works. Um, so if you tap it, it'll show this quick menu, you can have today and then it'll open straight to today's daily note. No surprise. Um, similarly, the frame note will open straight to that important navigation note that I uh, have that keeps a list of important places in my vault that I'm currently working from or whatever. So nothing too complicated yet. The projects button is where it gets a bit more interesting. Um, so the idea here is that I have a Kanban and I'll just um, show you it very briefly. I have a Kanban and I use this Kanban to manage the current status of all of my projects, the things that I'm currently working on. Uh, and I use Obsidian for project management and that's why all of these are captured here in such detail. So the nice thing is that I keep this Kanban updated. These on the left here is the things that I'm currently kind of working on. Um, and then if I tap that projects button, it actually reads that note and then looks for that information and presents the list of projects here in the exact same order that it shows up in the Kanban. So it's a pretty neat way of getting an overview of what I'm currently working on, jumping to something that is active, or if I wanted to, I could scroll way down and find something different. Um, but that's how that works. And then similarly, um, the current project button here reads that list and simply opens that very first item. So when I tap it, it's going to open the note that I'm keeping on Lumberjack, that plugin that I mentioned for those other buttons on the home screen. So that's the current uh, projects and the current project buttons. The books um, buttons here work a little bit similarly. They read a part of that frame note that I keep. You could also point it at a simple books note if you wanted to. And it then generates a list of, oops, there we go, generates a list of those items. And then if I tap one of these, um, I keep all of my books in DevonThink after converting them to PDF. Uh, it'll open straight to that book in DevonThink, which is very cool. Um, I'm just going to take a second here to stop and explain why this is perhaps more valuable than it might seem. I only have to keep one source of truth for these. I'm not going into shortcuts and changing the order of the books that I'm currently reading um, and also keeping a list of readings uh, somewhere else. I only use Obsidian. Uh, I only use one text file for um, this book list or one text file for all of these projects. And that central, I, that central piece of information then informs all these different parts of what I'm doing in order to drive these automations that make life a little bit easier. So um, it's a neat design pattern for shortcuts, uh, I guess, to, to be able to read text files. Since Obsidian keeps everything in plain text files, we don't need to wait for a plugin or for the developers to build out special integrations. Shortcuts can simply read these files split them into lines, um, and then use that information in creative ways. Um, and so, yeah, it's a, it's a really powerful, simple thing that uh, it's hopefully everybody can take advantage of. The current book, by, the current book button does the same thing um, as the current project button. It simply reads that list of books and opens the first book. And then uh, finally, I'll walk you through those two lumberjack actions. So Timber, and it's all wordplay, I'm sorry. But you can see there that I was previously in a preview mode. If you're uh, familiar with Obsidian, it's a markdown editor. So you can either show a rendered note or show a edit mode, which includes all the markdown source, um, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, but this plugin automatically converts the app into edit mode. So you can always make sure, or you can always assume that you'll be ready to type. There's no uh, gap in your thinking from when you open that shortcut to when uh, you're writing down whatever it is you needed to write down. And it's in a blank note and you can just write it and then it's saved in a designated folder. It's really neat. And then the second action here is log. And like I said, it'll add a task right on the daily note ready to type. And I can say upload the demo video to YouTube. 
Great. And that's it. Um, so again, I'll post these shortcuts uh, in, uh, or a link to these shortcuts in the, the, the video notes here. You can look at the shortcuts themselves and feel free to ask me um, questions, although of course none of this is offered with any guarantees or warranties, um, but I will try to help if I can uh, get these things working for you. But I think the main takeaway is that it's really powerful to be able to have um, access to these text files on a files basis and then to use shortcuts to navigate them and parse them and split them into items and do things with them. Um, and what I'm doing here is useful for my purposes, but maybe you will want to keep a list of recipes you're working on. And, uh, you know, it's a quick uh, button to open this week's menu or whatever if you keep recipes in, in Obsidian, or maybe you want to open a list of papers that you're currently reading. Um, and it you, you don't need to worry about maintaining these different lists of papers in different places and navigating through a bunch of menus or interfaces in order to find these things. It's a really neat way of cutting down on a lot of that cognitive load and getting right to whatever it is you are currently working on, or you're trying to work on anyway. So with that, um, Nothing crashed this time, so that's nice. Uh, yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. Um, you can post a comment, I guess, on YouTube or email me, um, ryan at fulcra.design, F-U-L-C-R-A dot design. Um, and, you know, hopefully this helps. Enjoy.